Did you know that your MacBook Pro with M4 Max has different power modes and maybe some other laptops earlier ones as well but when you get the laptop it's not very obvious but there's three there's low power automatic and high power and from default you will have it set on auto but what if you go on low power or high power are you getting more performance what about plugging in the charger or unplugging the charger are you going to lose power then can you get the same power well these are very good questions and in this video i'm going to explain how this works and which power mode should you be using depending what you're doing This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt P16, the ultimate creator laptop that doesn't just look good, but lets you bring the workstation performance anywhere. Professional 16-inch 4K OLED display, AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU, and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, and that's just the beginning. Go check out our whole playlist about this device and the full overview in the video description below. Thanks Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. I've got this uh, MacBook Pro set up in here. These two cables, they are going to my iVanky dock, which is just off the set over here. And that dock is actually charging the laptop with these two cables at 96 watts. You might be going to your power or battery in there and you can see it's fully charged and you're like, how can I see these like power settings in there? If you go to battery settings, you can choose the power mode, whether on battery or power adapter. So as you can see, we've got automatic low power and high power. Right now we are on the power adapter. And if I set it to low power, for example, then you can actually see it in here as well, that there's low power, automatic and high power. If it's an automatic, this energy mode is kind of hidden. Whether it's high or low, you can change it from there, okay? And you can set it to be different whether you're charging or like, let's say in this setup here, you've got a dock, you put the charger in, you can have it set automatically on different. So when you plug in something in like this here, it automatically goes to high power, for example, because I don't mind using more power and kicking the fans up when I want the high power. But when you're on the go on battery, for example, you can set it to low power, to have the most power efficient battery life, if that makes sense. So what happens to the hardware when we switch between these power modes? What actually happens? And that's exactly what, I got, what I'm gonna explain right now. So we are on low power and I've got quite a few things open. On this side of the screen, I'm also recording the screen on OBS. As you can see, it's on there. There's Premiere Pro open. I've got Cinebench open, lots of other bits, but we want this and also the uh, power gadget we can see the power draw of our CPU. We can see the fan speeds. Right now, the fans are not zero. They're not idling because when it's very, very low temperature, it actually just turns the fans off completely. But right now, they're on a little bit. Everything's green, temperatures are good. So I'm gonna press go on our CPU multi-core and I'm gonna get these stats back up here. And right now you can see it boosted to about 15 watts and then it pulled it back to roughly around eight to 10 watts, the CPU power draw. See nine watts. And as you can see, our temperatures are not rising that much going to 60 70s but the fan speed don't change at all and i'll let it run a little bit so you can see it keeps a pretty consistent 8 to 10 watts now as you can see we've plateaued pretty much perfectly the p cores are going 1.8 gigahertz and the e cores are actually running 2.6 gigahertz so much higher than the p cores and then the power draw is pretty much exactly the same now if i'm gonna take this power mode now from low to high look what happens over here now instantly our p cores boosted much higher interestingly the e cores have stayed the same so the low power mode actually limits the p core usage and lets the e cores still run exactly look at that the e cores haven't changed at all just the p cores but right now what happens is now it starts to thermally throttling when we hit about 108 degrees i believe and look at that, we've gone down here from about 60 watts package power draw to 48. And now it's starting to climb up as the fans are ramping up, which on high power mode, they can ramp up very quickly, very high. Okay, we've gone back to 50 watts. And as you can see the fans, when they are moving up in speed, also our power draw 
goes higher and higher until it cools it down and then it boosts even more and we go roughly back to the 4.0 gigahertz there okay 51 watts now they start to go at 5000 something rpm they're still ramping up can you hear it now look at that 50 watt 4 watts 55 watts 56 and look at the peak cause 3. Point, almost 3.9 gigahertz and now our CPU is pulling 58 watts. And as you can see, our fans are maxed out, both of them. And we're pushing 56, 57, 58 watts through. And as you can see, we've just completed a test. Our power consumption goes back down. CPU clock speeds, they don't need to run as fast. And once it's cool, the CPU, the computer's cooling down, the fans will go back down to idle and we'll let it do that. Now, this curve over here is very, very important, what you see on the top there, which means that we've boosted very high. We started thermally throttling, we came down and then the fans were ramping up until we got to that point. But the thing is, if I would have pressed go on the actual Cinebench again here, so we would have started the second straight away here. The fans would have stayed up and the performance would have been better. So if you want the best Cinebench performance scores, you should do it twice in a row. So the fans are already ramping highest or get some third party fan software that can actually run those fans 100% speed at all times. Now, as you can see, our fans have started to idle again. Now let's put this energy mode to automatic and now press go because we're all back in green. 40, 40, everything's back in green right now, okay? As you can see, we're doing a similar thing. We're going to about 55, 56 watts. Our temperatures are rising, rising. Okay, look, we've gone to 110 degrees. We've gone down and now we're slowly pushing back up as the fans are ramping back up. It's been running for a little bit. As you can see, our temperatures are still quite high there but our fans are not ramping to 5000 rpm and as you can see our power consumption is roughly around 49 to 50 watts on cpu not the extra 10 watts that they're pushing with the extra power mode as you saw till the end we had it at around 50 watts we never pushed it back to that 60 watts in there and the fans never ramped over 3500 something rpm as on the high power mode but now what if we unplug the power cord we're on battery power now and we'll start with the low power and then let's take a look as you can see the test is running in the background we are pushing roughly around eight nine watts eight to ten watts which was exactly the same as before see that's not changing at all vans are still on idle now let's put it to automatic power mode and boom we went to 56 57 watts 58 watts and as soon as we hit that very very high temperature 108 i believe it is now, boom, all of the CPU cores go back to around 49 watts. Fans start ramping up. Now, as you can see, we're pulling about 50 to 51 watts, which is slightly more on battery power than plugged in power, interestingly. But we're still not going to that 58, 9 watts extra little bit boost that it did there in the beginning. 3.76 rather than about 3.9. But here's what I'm going to do when it completes this test. I'm going to very quickly switch it to high power mode and then press go so we could see the ultimate high power mode where it doesn't have to do the dip because the fans are already ramping up. Okay, high power. I just swapped it to high power. Then now on battery, just going to start it again. So what can we see? We boosted to that 56, 57, close to 60 watts. And now the fans have gone over 4000 RPM. So this was the point where we swapped. It's going higher and is pushing 57 plus watts. Our core clock speeds are 3.9. Yep, the fans are going absolutely bonkers and our CPU is pulling 57, 58 to 59 watts. But the score is going to be so much better because look how stable both of these are. There's none of this dip of performance. It just goes boom. There we go. There it is because our fans have already ramped up. One of these fans is going almost at 6,000 RPM. The interesting thing is, even though the power draw kind of fluctuates a little bit, the clock speeds are so solid, which means that it's just playing with voltage. Sometimes it needs a little bit more power, but the clock speeds are saying at 
nine. So to answer the question, whether the power is the same on battery or plugged in, the answer is yes, you can get the same performance, which is good news because that means that you're not getting the full performance of the laptop only when it's plugged in or you're using the proprietary charger that comes with the MacBook, the 140 watt charger. You can actually plug it into any of the chargers that will just keep the kind of battery charge up, but you're not gonna get any less power. So even if you wanna opt for something like a 100 watt charger, that you want to buy off Amazon or something like that. I'm going to leave some links in the description below. And you want to just have a little bit more complex travel adapter or charger, you can still get the full performance of the MacBook without bringing that big chunk with you. The big benefit of that big chunk is just a bit faster laptop charger. But if you don't need that, you can get by with much less. Now then, when should you be using the different power modes? Here's my opinion and what I would do if I was you. If you would like to use your MacBook Pro as a MacBook Air and then you're doing just a lot of typing and you need the battery to last the longest, I would put on battery as low power mode, which means that you can do a lot of typing, you can still browse the web and the single core performance, it's still gonna clock pretty high. As you can see, four gigahertz there, it's still gonna clock there and you're not gonna notice the single core snapping is much different. But then let's say you start editing it, I would probably swap it from low power to automatic, which means we're going to get 90% of the power of this MacBook Pro and you're still going to get any of your creative applications or workflow what you need. You can get it done super, super fast. To use the high power mode on a battery, probably for most people, I don't think there's some scenarios, but I'm sure you can figure out when you should use the high power on battery, but that drains the battery very, very fast. As you can see, we're already 92% of these few tests that we've done. But what I would do is on power adapter, I would always leave it to high power. When you've got it plugged in, let's say whether at home, you're doing some work or you're editing or whenever you're plugged in, leave it at high power. Especially when you're doing it in a docking station, make sure that this is on high power because you probably don't mind the fan speeds and you want the best performance best exporting performance but there are a few times where i can see when you shouldn't be using the high power rod one when you want it to be a little bit quieter in an environment where you maybe need to take some notes or you're editing in the background or you need it to be quiet, then I'd probably put it on automatic and the fans are not gonna kick that loud. You know that it's gonna be kind of, you know, all right noise. Secondly, if you are on the, the power brick, the included power brick, for example, and you are about to go somewhere and you want the battery to charge as fast as possible, I wouldn't put it on high power even if you're working on it, put it to automatic and you're using a little bit less power, which means the battery is going to charge faster. So now you know how the power modes work. What's the difference, when to use it and what the hardware does with it. Make some good choices when picking the right power mode. If you want to check out this MacBook or some of the other content on the channel, there's plenty of them on the channel. Check out the performance review of this versus some of the PC desktop CPUs, it's absolutely ridiculous. Highly recommend checking it out. And if you want to know how good this is against the maxed out version of this, because this only has 48 gigabytes of RAM. In a few days, I've got the one coming that is 128 gigabytes of RAM. That's ridiculous. By the way, if you know, pick up this laptop or any of the Apple new M4 devices, I found out that Amazon is actually selling them already at a discounted rate, much cheaper than Apple's offering on their website. So if you want to save some money check out my links in the video description below and um, you know save some money just so you know thanks guys for watching bye bye